going. Um, see if anyone jumps in halfway through. But uh, welcome to this webinar. We've got the Young People in Community Broadcasting. Uh, I'm Michaela. I'm just going to give you guys a bit of an announcement. So now available to listen online and broadcasting on Australian community radio stations is the sixth installment of CBAA's National Features and Documentary Series, an annual showcase of new work by Australian community radio producers. With training and mentoring provided by the Community Media Training Organisation, eight producers based at community stations, coast to coast, city to bush, turn their ID into an original half-hour feature for a national audience throughout 2019. Now that that's out of the way, my name is Michaela. Um, I'm the Assistant Pathways Training Manager at the CMTO. Um, and I'm really excited to be presenting tonight's webinar, or facilitating, I should say. We have Molly presenting. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the, the land, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, of which this meeting takes place, and pay my respects to Elders past, present, and future. Uh, just a bit of a rundown of tonight's webinar. Community Radio aims to promote diversity, democracy, access and equality and, and one of the ways in which we achieve this goal is by providing a voice to the youth. Whether it is a station that is specifically licensed to serve a youth audience or as part of youth programming on stations serving a wider community, young people have a voice on community radio. We hope that community broadcasting can provide a space for young people to engage with their communities and express what is most important for them. Following on from the 2019 CBAA Conference Youth Forum, we hope that tonight's session will provide the future leaders of the sector to get together as part of the Young People and Community Media webinar for 2019. We're very lucky to be joined tonight by Molly George, the Media Learning Manager at Sin Media in Melbourne and current youth representative on the CBAA board. Our session tonight will look at the following. The great work being undertaken by youth broadcasters, training opportunities that the sector provides, how to keep radio relevant in a changing media environment, and what can be done to ensure that young people stay involved with the sector. Now that's enough from me. I think we'll pass it on over to Molly to present the rest of the webinar. And if you have any questions, pop them up in the chat box below and we'll get to them at the end. All right, see you then. Hi everyone. Um, if you can let me know that you can hear me, that would be great. I think it's all good. Um, uh, thank you for that introduction, Michaela. Um, before I start, I'd just like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that uh, we meet on today and where I am currently, which is in Melbourne, the Rwandari people of the Kulin Nations. I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging and to anybody who identifies as Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander that joins us tonight. Sovereignty was never ceded, always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Um, cool. So uh, as Michaela uh, beautifully um, intro to me, um, intro me to, um, I am Molly, I'm the youth rep of the CBAA board. I work at SIN in Melbourne as the media learning manager and um, uh, a lot, I get asked this a lot, um, but I'm not a broadcaster, I work in the management side of things and uh, that's the way I like it, apparently that makes me um, very in demand, <laughs> um, but uh, I'm really uh, passionate about supporting and uplifting the voices of young people in general, but obviously especially in the community broadcasting sector. I'm just going to share my slides quickly. I haven't done it yet, um, so here we go. Uh, thanks, everyone. I'll chuck on the presentation. Bear with me. Great. Look at that. Okay. Um, so today we're going to be talking about some great topics. Uh, mostly I'm going to cover um, what we discussed at the Youth Forum um, at the recent CBAA conference, um, how you can support young people in the sector, um, some professional development opportunities available in the sector for young people and uh, the ways and some people that you could potentially contact to um, be to get some more information about how you can support 
uh, young people in the sector. Cool. Um, so uh, before we begin, I just want to uh, get you guys to put some stuff in the chat bar. So I just want to know a little bit about who is here tonight. So uh, if you could please um, include your name, the station that you volunteer at or you represent and uh, how your station is currently involving young people uh, in the sector. Cool. Okay, sorry. Um, great. Cool. I don't actually know how to see the chat bar whilst I do this as well, but I'm going to click some stuff and see how it goes. Okay. Sorry, guys. And Michaela, if you'd be able to help me if people have been commenting, can you just read them out? I can't actually see them. <laughs> Ooh, well, anyway, I will move on. <laughs> All right, I'll let, I'll let you know if we get some questions in the chat box. I'll just Thank chime you. in every now and again. <laughs> Thanks, honey. That'd be great. No um, okay, so I'm just going to follow up and um, tell you guys a little bit about what was discussed at the Youth Forum um, today. Uh, Youth Forum recently um, at the CBAA conference. Um, so... Uh, we discussed a lot of things um, and a lot of it was very productive and um, really, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to find out, there you go, um, yeah, really productive, but um, mostly we discussed uh, ways in which we thought that young people could help future-proof um, the sector with skills. And so tech was a massive part of this discussion. Um, we discussed a lot about um, various internships that um, stations could offer and um, about shadowing, etc. We also discussed about um, larger metro stations, um, there being a little bit of a barrier to be an on-air volunteer um, in that sense. And so there was a bit of a discussion about sub-metros and the way that they could fill that gaps as well. Um, I personally think that all stations should be able to be accessible to young people in uh, various ways. So, um, yeah, I think that that could be a really good idea. I also think it's really good for stations to work together. Um, we talked about um, for Triple Z using their digital station as a way to open up experimentation. So having two different um, platforms, um, I guess your FM and your digital um, station uh, channels to be able to um, to be able to support young people and the digital station being more of an experimental platform. I know that SIN has done that in the past um, and it's worked really well. Um, so that is one thing that we discussed. Um, the, we discussed a few of the various ways that other stations were working at supporting young people and getting them involved, um, be it, you know, volunteering at front desk, music libraries, etc. Um, we also talked about presenter training and how that could be better marketed to young people and supporting young people, and I'll go into that a bit later on. Uh, we talked about governance skills and how it, that is also a very important area for future proofing and getting young people involved. And obviously the CBAA does a really good job at that, given that uh, I am able to sit on the board uh, as a young person um, in the sector. So that's very exciting. Um, ooh, there you go. Cool. Okay. I've worked it out. <laughs> this is how I do it. Um, so great. Uh, hi, Riley uh, from Sin. Hello. <laughs> and also Triple R. And Jonathan is a volunteer at Triple uh, R. Great. Thank you. Um, really great to have you. And anybody else, if you have any other questions, apparently I've worked out how to read the chat bar. So that's great. Um, thanks. Um, oh, gosh. No. <laughs> there we go. Cool. Um, so I'm going to move on a little bit. Um, to more of the ways that I think um, that other stations could uh, be working more practically to support young people. Um, the last thing that I wanted to comment on about the youth forum was that we um, discussed about a youth advisory committee as a way for young people to get together regularly. Um, so we sort of discussed either monthly or bi-monthly um, ideas that, uh, 
the ways that young people could be better supported in the sector and that person would answer to the youth rep and then would uh, relay that information and what was discussed to the board. Um, so we are working on that and we had quite a few great young people put their hands up for that as well. If it's something that you're interested in, please get in touch with me. Cool. Okay, so um, some ways that I think stations could get uh, young people um, better involved. Firstly, uh, before I even go into practical ways, um, we need to think about uh, the ways that stations um, stigmatise young people um, and way that older people can often stigmatise young people. So I remember um, a couple of conferences ago, I, I stood up and I said something um, and somebody was like, I don't really understand young people. Are they, uh, what's this Pokemon Go thing? And I was like, mate, listen. Um, so <laughs> I think that uh, like, and nobody likes to be stereotyped or um, placed with assumptions. And I think that that's something that everybody should bring um, especially to young people as well. Um, and remember that uh, the reason why people got into community broadcasting in the first place, why you're passionate about it and knowing that young people also do share that as well. Great, um, so some of the ways that I think uh, stations can be supporting um, young people um, or putting them at the um, forefront of, broad, uh, of content and broadcasting. Uh, so National Youth Week is generally in um, early to mid April. Um, each state has their different um, dates, slightly different, but um, generally it's around that time. And that is a really, really good thing to work towards in regards to uh, getting young people who have shown an interest and who might be volunteering at the front desk or might wanting to be getting on air um, as a way to support and uplift their content and their voices. Um, I obviously work at CIN and so I think that you should be doing that all the time, but I also am aware that CIN operates in a really, really different way to other stations um, in the way that they do their grid um, and the kind of content that they put out. So um, I think that that would be a really good way, place to start as National Youth Week. Um, encouraging people to bring friends to your station um, and, to get them involved. Obviously, young people have friends and it's easier to do things when they feel, when people feel safe. So um, that would be a really good way to encourage more young people to get involved. Um, one thing that's really important is to make sure that young people feel as though they have autonomy over um, what they choose. Uh, I think a lot of uh, what, what they choose and what they broadcast, I think a lot of the time, um, young people, when they're at stations, um, what they can uh, broadcast is uh, can be dictated by the ideas of somebody else, and I think that you shouldn't do that. I don't think that that is that doesn't give young people autonomy, and it's not going to make them passionate about wanting to stay there. And if you want young people um, for a positive reason, then you need to make sure that they have space to be a broadcaster. Um, I think that. Uh, also uh, youth run volunteer events, making sure that you guide them, but they also have autonomy to have some ideas. Um, making sure that you support young people in a social way. So not just assuming that there's one young person and there's another young person and um, because you're both young, you wanna hang out. Um, you know, for instance, a young person might be really interested in um, knowing in, in cars, for example, and there might be a volunteer who's older, but um, also shares that passion. Um, so maybe joining those people as opposed to just putting young people and young people in the room. I know here um, at SIN that um, there is a show, oh, actually it's a podcast, um, which is all about Thomas the Tank Engine because we have three volunteers um, who are very, very passionate about model trains. Um, <laughs> I didn't know that there could be so many people passionate about model trains, but uh, they've kind of also got me hooked as well. Um, uh, one of those volunteers is as old as 25 and the other one is as young as 18. And I know that that doesn't seem like a big jump in regards to the ways that other people and other stations might um, have a jump, but for somebody to be under 18 and then also, uh, and connecting with a 25 year old is a, is unusual at SIN sometimes. So I think that um, it's important to remember um, interests as opposed to just um, age uh, to connect young people. Um, and then also in general, having an allocated youth spot on the grid to be filled each week with young broadcasters. Um, and once again, having that space to um, give young people autonomy over what they wanna broadcast about. Um, I don't think it's particularly fair to 
sort of hover over young people and dictate what they should say. Um, so uh, I would encourage a lot of um, space and autonomy. Um, that being said, that's a skill to learn as well on how to support young people. So if you are from a station that is wanting to get more young people, but you don't have many and you're not really sure how to get them involved or even how to offer space and autonomy, that's okay. Uh, please get in contact with me and I'd be more than happy to help support you with that. Cool. Uh, next slide. Uh, so current opportunities um, uh, for young people in the sector. So um, the first thing that I would ask everybody here is, um, is the training that you do at your station actually suiting young people? So uh, quite often, I think, um, and this, I, 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 you know, I'm from a city, I'm from Melbourne, there's lots of community broadcasting and there's also, um, there's a lot of bigger stations here. So I um, am aware that my knowledge can be very um, uh, isolated to only that um, and I'm really happy and open to hearing any of um, your questions and comments about what you're doing at your station. Um, however, uh, there are some training programs that I know about there that are quite long and are also quite expensive and I think that that creates a real barrier to getting young people involved in community broadcasting. So what I would ask you to consider is um, I guess, how cheap can you run your training? Um, and I know that also a lot of stations do it for free, which is awesome, and we don't, but we do it at a very low price, Sin. Um, and also the length as well. So we only run it over two full days, um, and that makes them, after, at the end of that, fully autonomous volunteers. They don't need us to help them use the, the studio after that. They might need a little bit of support, but um, generally they're autonomous from that. Uh, point on. And so I think that uh, making sure that you uh, think about your training and how accessible is it to a young person. If it's not fully accessible, how could you make it uh, more accessible? Um, where could you offer it? Um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, thinking about some uh, internship and uh, shadowing opportunities at your station. So um, I guess furthering on from when we talked about tech, um, there, I know that this is a bit of an issue across the sector about what are we gonna do when uh, this you know, older volunteer who knows how all about how our transmitter works and um, how we do our broadcast when that person you know, leaves or um, can't do it anymore, like how are we gonna operate? Um, and this is where young people can come in because they're actually quite innovative and also, I mean, I'm not going to speak for all young people, but tech literate as well. So internships and shadowing people uh, as a volunteer position would be a really, really good thing to get people involved in um, at stations. Uh, I also uh, would uh, suggest even um, internships. And going, going on from that, um, shadowing even management positions as well, um, especially if you're a station that is entirely volunteer run. Um, getting young people to shadow into positions of management, if you're doing any financial management, obviously being aware of privacy, um, but financial management, um, any sort of program running, any training, um, getting young people to shadow that is not only really good experience for them, but it future proofs your station as well. Um, yeah, uh, moving on. Um, we, uh, we involve um, at SIN school groups and classes throughout the day. That's how we run our social enterprise, which I'm the manager of. Um, and one of the programs that we have is called Schools on Air. Um, so that every weekday from between 10 a.m. and um, 3 p.m. we have programming from schools and uh, school groups from that. And that is a program that is funded um, regularly by the Community Broadcasting Foundation. So that goes into the third point on the screen. Uh, could you get funding for youth programming from the Community Broadcasting Foundation? Um, not only does it create for innovative content, um, but thinking strategically, um, the Community Broadcasting Foundation have 
uh, certain criteria that they want to fulfil within the sector. Uh, youth participation and engagement is one of them, uh, which is another reason why we get our program funded every year is because it engages lots and lots of young people every single year and we help them fulfil that quota. So I think if you... If you have some young people and you want a little bit more support um, to get it off the ground, to get more young people to enrol a school or two, then um, getting funding for that uh, through the CBF and talking to them about how that could work would be a really good way to go about it. Um, other things that I have on my list are mentoring programs, um, particularly tech. Um, and then also I wanted to make a mention that um, uh, something that Emma Hart, who is on the CPAA board, mentioned is 3CI have their live to air tech training as well, um, which is something that I haven't heard a whole lot about, about there being specific tech training. Um, so I think that uh, she would be a really good person to talk to uh, and to connect you with 3CI um, to talk a little bit more about that if you want to know more about that. Cool. I'm going to move on. Um, oh, sorry. I actually have, I have one more slide before the last thought but I didn't make it so I'll just say it now. Um, some sector opportunities for young people um, creating CRN content so on flagships like The Wire which is a news and current affairs um, program, um, Fair Comment, All the Best um, and Good Morning Country. Um, I'll talk specifically about All the Best because it's one that I know the best. I'm also very happy for anybody else um, here, uh, Danny or Michaela, to chime in if you want to and um, to fill those gaps. Um, all the Best is always looking for new content producers and story ideas. And All the Best is a program that is run in collaboration with um, with FBI, Triple R, and SIN. Um, and they also re broadcast it as a podcast um, regularly um, and it's a really great place for uh, you to get into more sort of um, narrative and storytelling um, and also for young people to it's a great place to start as um, a content producer as well. Um, you could write for the CBX magazine, there's a the Deutsche Welle internship, um, always opportunities available on the CBAA jobs board. Um, there is that CB, the CBAA award for young people, um, which is always really exciting to see when it's awarded uh, personally. Um, uh, there's, as I mentioned before, CBF funding available and also keeping an eye out for any CBAA social media and e-news um, for, for some of the latest opportunities for young people to be able to engage as well. Um, I sort of flew through that and I realised that I'm pretty much already done. <laughs> um, but I guess one, one thing that I want to ask you is after I've just sort of blurted out all of that um, information, what's one thing that you think that you can do differently to support young people at your station? I'm going to have to escape this to be able to see it properly. Great. And um, thanks to Danny to, for linking that as well. Great. Cool. No worries. Um, well, if that's the case, if there's if there's nobody who sort of wants to chime in about um, anything else that they think that they can do differently in the chat bar, then um, that's it really from me. Um, of course, there was a lot more extensive things that we talked about at the youth forum, um, and not some of them I won't go into because they're really youth young people, uh, youth specific, but also because um, I guess it was a conversation that was a sort of safe space and some of the things might not necessarily be appropriate to take outside that room. Um, but uh, I've really loved the opportunity to be a uh, representative for young people in the sector. And I'm also really, my inbox um, and my phone line at SIN is always open to um, any of your questions, any comments, any um, and, and for any guidance um, on ways that you can support young people in the sector. So cool. Um, I think that's it. All right. Thanks so much, Molly. I might just um, do a, a little bit of a, a wrap up. Um, so of course, if you have um, if you have any questions at all, um, feel free to contact uh, Molly. 
um, Molly, uh, if you're able to just pop your email in the chat box there. Yeah. So everybody can uh, hit you up with any questions they have. Um, I might pop mine in there as well, just in case um, you are wanting a copy of the webinar or knowing someone who wants a copy of the webinar. So I'll just throw mine up there as well. Um, so thanks so much, Molly. And thanks, no ever, thanks everyone for attending. Um, be sure to join us for our next webinar to be held this time next week. So 6.30, uh, Wednesday, the 27th of November. Uh, that one will be casting the net, getting your content onto multiple um, multiple platforms. Um, more and more listeners are going online to access their audio. As community broadcasters, we need to take advantage of these emerging and newly established platforms to ensure that our traditional service of live and local content is available everywhere. That one will be presented by the CBAA Manager of Online Products and Services, Andrew Morris and will help us ensure that our voice is available on every platform by which we can connect with our community. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us and we'll hope to see you next week for uh, the Casting the Net webinar. All right, see you later.